Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, it's me. Doing one of these, uh... I don't even know what you want to call them now. It's a vlog, but it's not really a vlog kind of thing. Just figured I'd give you something worthwhile to the focus your attention on while I prattle all the way over nothing. Um, sure, the game's four years old, the sequel's already out, but... No. Anyway, um... I just figured I should do some kind of an update, um, just based on the fact that I've been off for a week and I'm going back to work in about 12 hours, uh, sorry, about 14 hours. And I really haven't done anything over the past seven days. Um, I know I did the, uh, the, the non-recap uh, uh, non of my Icon for Hire experience back on, uh, back on Monday night, but that was you know, that's pretty limited in scope. Uh, yeah, so I have enough since uh, last Sunday. Took a few days off for, uh, you know, for, in anticipation of the, the concert. Mm. Overall, that was definitely a disappointment. I mean, yeah, sure, I got to go spend a little time chilling with the band. Uh, way early, but the fact I missed out on the concert itself was definitely a bummer. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I wound up spending Tuesday through Saturday doing fuck all when I got back. I mean, it's not to say that I haven't accomplished anything whatsoever, it's just nothing of any real significance. I mean, most of, most of my time has been spent just uh, fuck around, trying different games out. Uh, see, so yeah, I served uh, in on Hi-Fi Rush, which that game actually, uh, you know, I, I really have a hard time with rhythm games. But Hi-Fi Rush, I've been having a lot, a lot of fun with anyway, um, in spite of that. You know, based on the much more forgiving gameplay. Um, as opposed to your usual rhythm game. But, you know, you still have to be on the ball with that one. So I took a break from that today, uh, last night. Started playing Disgaea 7. And, you know, after the disappointment that Disgaea 6 was, I've really been enjoying this one a lot more. Um, it is harder, but it's more Disgaea-like than the previous game. And, oh dear god, I cannot get over that, that menu, that, uh, that, that soundtrack. I mean, I, I have never uh, held the Disgaea games in particularly high esteem as far as the soundtracks go. But yeah, they got the occasional banger. I mean, you know, off the top of my head, the White Tiger was an excellent song. I, I know people don't like Axel, but uh, I love the his theme song. Uh, but aside from that, I really can't think of any, you know, real standout tracks until this guy has seven. And there are just there are so many songs in, in there, especially the the uh, the stage select menu music. Oh dear God, that is just mwah. I love it. Do I love it as much as I love the cat? That's eh, debatable. Yeah, I'm looking at you down there. Yeah can't see if I'm being stared at by a cat. <laughs> oh, get up here. Yeah, get up here, you. Okay. So she's not going to get up here. Um, anyway. So, I mean, mo mostly my, my week consisted of gaming. <laughs> gaming and uh, putting on more weight. Cool. I mean, this thing right here, this is just, this is sort of a lot of, uh, a lot of shame, a lot of pain right now, because I used to be a lot skinnier. I mean, up until about three, four years ago, if I broke 140 pounds, that was unusual. And now I'm, str I'm, I'm struggling just to get back under 150. 
And yeah, I know most of that is the uh, the the um, result of HRT, and in particular that uh, um, that that span in my first year on where I just went completely psychotic on food. You know, I had like a, a three month window there where I just could not stop eating for <laughs> for anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Trish. Oh. Ran away. I'm coming. Make me sad. I was hoping that she'd jump up here and join me. But I guess that's not to be then. Um, yeah, so. I know. I know a lot of people are going to say things like, uh, you know, you're, you're too skinny as it is, or you. You can stand up to gain some weight or some dumb shit like that. But, come on. I'm the one that has to look at myself in the mirror with a shirt on, and I hate what I see there. So, no. I know I need to lose weight. I mean, I know, um, given my biology, my, uh, my unfortunate chromosome um, arrangement when I was born, I know that an hourglass figure is never going to happen. Yeah, it's still like to not have a fucking muffin top every time I, I, I get dressed, you know. But I don't know. I need to have more willpower, you know, to actually be active on my days off. Even even my working days, I, I you know, yeah, I'm up and about. I'm doing shit for twelve, you know, twelve and a half hours each each shift, but. I'm not really burning a lot of calories when I'm out there. Kind of irritating when I come home from work in the morning and I wake up in the afternoon and I find that, you know, I still, I still put on pounds, I still gain weight. It's like, I eat less on my work days and I still wind up putting on pounds. It's like, how the hell does that happen? And I know a lot of it does have to come back on the, uh, the types of food I eat. But, again, it's a cost of living thing. I mean, it sucks that, uh, you know, you go to the store and anything that's healthy, anything that's good for you, you know, it's going to cost you a bunch more. And, the, you know, the, the kicker on, on the whole thing is also that you go to the store and anything that's good and healthy for you has such a short shelf life that it, it, it doesn't keep you on the you know a few days maybe maybe a couple weeks you know for the most part you know meanwhile i can go over to the frozen food section you know drop 50 bucks on whatever there you know i i can just store up you know a, <laughs> you know like a, a month month's supply of food no problem there and I can just whip it out whenever, nuke it, and it's good to go. Yeah. And, you know, I gotta be honest, when I come home from work, you know, I really don't want to have to deal with with meal prep and, uh, you know, all that shit, too. I just want to have something that takes just a few minutes to warm up and then go. And when I wake up in the afternoon, you know, same thing. I, I I don't want to spend 15 minutes preparing a meal. You know, I could just take five minutes to warm it up in the microwave and, and be done. So yeah, I'm lazy, and that's catching up with me too. But <sighs> what's a girl to do? You know? Oh, a Trish down there. I think she's upset with me because I'm not laying her up here. I mean, I'd let you up here if you were, uh, if you're, if you were to request it. But you just stare away from me and stare at, at the bookshelf. That's fine. Okay, she's gonna make her way over to the scratch pad that she uses as a bed. It's silly, but okay. Oh, God, where, where was I anyway? 
Yeah. Weight gain, sure. Oh, uh, but before this, but before the uh, the concert, um, I did go uh, a week ago Friday get my hair done and got the the color touched up. Went with more of a like a purplish tint this time, which in this kind of light is uh, isn't terribly noticeable. But I was out in in, in some brighter sunlight the other day. You know, as, as I was driving home, I looked in the rear view mirror. And holy shit, that purple really shines through there. I was honestly shocked. I mean, I think it, I think it looks cool as hell, but I was not expecting it to show up that well. I just hope that it sticks, it holds, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll be getting that touched up in uh, another. Uh, what about another six weeks or so? I'm um, ahead of Camp Icon. Which, yeah, I've been thinking about that lately, and... Sure, I'm still... I'm still debating on whether I'm not gonna go or not. I mean, yeah, I, I put forward all the money to book the hotels and everything. Got the ticket. But I'm still nervous about traveling. Um, particularly down to that region. Um, I mean, you, you understand, I, I would hope if, if you've kept up with me and... Sorry. Eh, long day, can't talk. But if you've kept up with, kept up with me at all, I'm sure you, are, you know that uh, I've been, you know, nervous because of, you know, it's a Bible Belt and being I am who and what I am yeah, you know, things aren't exactly um, the smoothest of sailing right now. You know, especially in, in those regions. Um, any, any red state is, uh, as, far as, I could, as far as I could see, any red state is just hostile territory you know, toward people like me. <sighs> Sucks. But I still want to go. You know, just you know, that that whole travel part is uh, you know, it does have me a little nervous. Also, when I when I think about my car, you know, it's got a uh, hundred forty six hundred forty seven thousand miles on it right now. I don't know, you know, if it's really up for that kind of a trip. I'm gonna say probably, but can I be absolutely certain? Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably still mind it going either way, just because I, I hate committing to something and then not going. Plus, it looks like I'm going to have a travel companion when, when I go anyway, so... <laughs> I feel like I'm more or less obligated at this point. But, um, yeah, so that'll be in June, so looking forward to that. Um, kind of wish I was wearing makeup right now. <laughs> I feel way too plain, way too, uh, way too underdressed right now. So, mm, I just... Yeah, this is just more of an impromptu thing where I just thought, hey, you know, I should just do one of these before I go to bed. Um, gosh. I hate when I don't have a script to, to work off of, which I never do, but I usually have a topic in mind that I'm trying to think of when, when I start one of these. Not today. I just want to hear my voice. I just want to work on my voice and, and try to try to you know, work on holding that in again because I have fallen so far out of practice with that that I don't really sound much different than my usual than my uh, my old masculine voice and honestly that scares the shit out of me I mean I don't know if I can even get back down there anymore but uh, 
Let me try. Just gotta see if I can drop it down. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. This is really as far down as I can go. Which I know is not that different. Um, sure, it's, no, it's noticeably lower at this point in direct comparison, but I guess when you compare my my normal voice with uh, you know with, with the average um, um, person who is you know male at birth, I guess I am still a bit higher than than the average. Maybe even into that androgynous territory, so I don't worry about it too much, I guess, in, in the overall scheme, overall scheme of things. But when you look at the possible hostility you know, exhibited toward people uh, like me, you know, out in, out in the general public, you know, again, particularly in those red state areas, you know, anything that could give me away when I'm out and about in the general public is really you know, something that I want to avoid. Which is the reason why I'm so like hyper fixated on, on trying to pass uh, as well as I can. So I don't know if that makes any sense to you or not, but I hope it does. Because I hate having to try to explain these things when people don't understand things you know, for the first time. But I'm basically autistic anyway, so I don't I don't understand so um, the way people think and understand things anyway. So I can say things that make total sense to me, but make absolutely no sense to you whatsoever because I'm here and you're here, and our lines just don't just don't connect. I wish I'd been tested for autism when I was uh, you know, of an appropriate age. Uh, but my parents dropped the ball on that too. Like they did with so much shit when I was growing up. I mean... Should I blame them for it? I don't know. I just... Um, I went with it when I was young because I didn't know any better. And looking back now, it's like, um, you know, my my parents, they were a product of their time. And sure, nowadays that really doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't serve as an excuse to most people. But back then, um, maybe it did. You know, they uh, they grew up in a, a time in, in, in the household where, you know, you just didn't test for things. You didn't have doctors who would who would take that kind of shit seriously. It would just be okay. Well, you you either behave or you get the shit beat out of you. Now, as for me, I don't know if that was ever an issue with me. I mean, I know I was always a quiet kid. I was always reserved as far as I was aware of, but I don't know if uh, if that was the result of anything or if I was just naturally that way. It's hard to say. Um, but, you know, the, I guess that's a good segue there, <laughs> you know, talking about things I don't remember, you know. That's basically, that's maybe three quarters of my childhood right there, even my adolescence. I think I've touched on this in the past already, but if I haven't, well, you know, here's, here's the thing with, with it. You know, I've got very, um, very spotty memory of my early life, like, um, you know, basically from early childhood up until about the time that I was 15 or 16 years old. And you know the you know the early childhood stuff. I can understand that. You know, most people don't really remember things from when they're three, four, five years old. Okay, yeah, that 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 checks out. 
that's normal, right? Now, where I guess work is starting for me is, you know, I start getting into the point where I'm 10, 12, even 14, 15 years old, and so much of that span is just a total blank. It's like, okay, what the fuck was I doing in in those years? What you know, what was I into? What are the memories that that were made during those times? And generally speaking, all I got, I've got is uh, just a big blank. You know, I'll have those snapshot memories of uh, like individual moments, or I will have. Uh, generalizations of people and events um, but as for specifics I, I got uh, I got so little to draw from there and it, it's concerning you know like you know it and again you know the early childhood stuff you know even you know even like the you know the late single digit years you know that's fine but now you start getting into like, um, you know, when I'm old enough to drive, and I still can't remember a lot of that shit. You know, that's where I'm concerned. And I don't know if that's normal, if it's, if it's abnormal. I I bring it up, and you know, to uh, to, to friends and. and and acquaintances and, and you know the response I get is that I should just let it go just don't worry about it and I suppose it's easier said than done <sighs> but uh, do I really want to or should I just let it go do I have memories that I should be remembering that I, I'm blocking out for some reason did something happen that you know that you know, traumatized me in some way that I'm blocking out, or am I just uh, just dealing with some like early dementia shit or whatever? I don't know. So I guess it doesn't really affect my present day um, life all that much. It's just it, it's just one of those irritating things, you know. It's like. Okay, there are these things that happen. No, oh, sorry. Where you know you're gonna you're gonna have friends, you're gonna have family that'll, that'll be able to re, you know just recall that. Just you know, snap, 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 and ow, it actually hurts. I can't snap for shit. <laughs> um, but you know they'll they'll look at you and you're just like, uh, if you say so. Um, and that's why I worry because compared to my peers and even my, my, my family members, it's like, okay, why can they remember these things so clearly, so vividly, but I got nothing. I'm just like, okay, what what was going on in my life that I've you know, that I've, I've forgotten so much of it. <sighs> And again, I probably wouldn't worry about it too much, but I start to wonder, I start to, to think and go into these worst case scenarios and, and I don't know if I should even bring this up, but well, whatever. Not like anyway, it's gotten this far in the video anyway, so <laughs> fuck it, I'll just keep going. Um, I mean... One of the connections that I, I worry about um, existing here is is the part where, as far as I as far back as I can remember, I have had um, issues with with adult men, like like any any man that is either older than me or larger than me. I've always had. You know, just, just, if I, if I'm lucky, if I'm, you know, at best, I'm apprehensive around them. You know, like, like uneasy, it's just like, okay, um, you know, can you stay away, keep your distance kind of thing? 
And at worst, I have actually been on the verge. Actually, I, I've been pushed into uh, mild panic attacks when they get too um, too close to me. And this has been as far back as I can, as I can recall, up to and including the present day. It's like, okay, what what would have happened? Why, why am I, you know? So nervous, so you know, um, standoffish when it comes to men in particular. It's like if if there's a if I'm stuck in a one on one with a a man who's older and, and bigger than me, I'm just like ah shit, stay the fuck away from me, please, 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 please. I mean, of course there are exceptions. There are you know, the the ones that I've known for years that I've you know, had a chance to to vet, if you will, you know, to be able to say they're okay. Yeah, they're they're okay. But if it's any random man, and and like you know, like I'm saying, this goes back even back when I was. Uh, when I was still closeted, when I was identifying as male. And even back then, I was still the same way. I really became aware of it um, during my first uh, my first retail job um, back when I was 18. I mean, I, I, I guess in the back of my mind, I knew that I was there when I was younger than that. But I was so rarely in a one-on-one -on -one uh, situation with any with any adult male uh, other than my my dad but oh god that that's another one altogether all where when I was young um, even into, into my mid and late teens you know when I was young I was absolutely terrified of my dad like like he was you know, someone that I I feared uh, to the point that if I was in close proximity to to him when I was young, you know, I was uh, just on the absolute like meltdown, panic attack kind of thing. And you know that might have been because I associated him with uh, with discipline, you know, because. Again, you know, 1950s, where uh, you know, where spanking was uh, was absolutely acceptable and, and the norm for uh, for discipline. You know, I know it caused me a lot of pain when uh, the few times I, I remember getting my ass beat. Oh shit! Sorry, got the microphone was there. So. I don't know if, if that was the only factor there, you know, if, if the, uh, the discipline carried out by, by male authorities is the, you know, the, the whole catalyst there, so the whole reason why I'm so, so much this way, or if there's something else. You know, it's, um, it's hard for me to say. And yeah, you're gonna have people saying things like, "Oh yeah, you should just go see a therapist. You should just, you know, get professional help, talk about it." But that also uh, brings to, to mind a question of what happens if I go to a therapist, if I if I go see someone, you know, get the help, and we're somehow able to uh, to unlock these memories. And who's to say that I'm going to be able to handle what we find? You know, if there is anything. It's like, okay. You know, kind of being damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. Like, uh, what do I do? And yeah, I'm, I'm scared of what I could find. Or maybe it's nothing. And maybe my uh, aversion to, you know, 
um, being in close proximity to any male is uh, is is part of my you know part of my hardwiring from uh, you know from birth. Who knows? <sighs> but yeah, that's the kind of shit that I think about a lot. Whether there's any basis in uh, in truth there and in uh, anything other than a conspiracy. Um, theory, who, you know, who knows? Yeah, maybe it's nothing. Uh, gosh. So, I did not mean to prattle on that long, but I'm looking at the screen right now. It looks like I've been going for about a half hour or so. And the sun is definitely coming up. I can see the, the light of day through the, the blinds over on, on that side. Oh god, that's something of a nightmare I gotta deal with right now. <laughs> so, last year, um, actually about a year and a half ago now, I got a letter from the, the HOA, you know, the Homeowners Association, telling me, okay, you need to replace your deck. Okay, so last spring I go through, I get that done, and this was the end of April, so just over a, a year ago now. Uh, it was the second week of May that they send me another letter saying, you need to get your deck stained no later than July 31st. Failure to do so will result in a $250 a month fine uh, by the HOA. Okay, so that's, you know, that, that's pretty, that'll add up in, in a hurry. But, you know, the uh, the general uh, wisdom when it comes to dex and staining is you're supposed to like cure in the, the summer heat for you know, anywhere from six, mo six months to a year. But they want the deck stained with it in less than 90 days. Well, okay, I, you know, I tried to appeal to the board, but they were just like, uh, you know, the, the, the HOA board, they, but they just told me to fuck off and, you know, so you need to do it. Um, you need to get it stained by the end of July. It's reasonable. The boards aren't that big. Blah, 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 blah. Fuck you, you know. So, begrudgingly, I, you know, pick up a, a gallon of stain, go to work, get the, the deck stain. But, uh, but five, six days later, I have another, opportun uh, another opportunity, and I stain the second coat. And yeah, it looked really good when I first did it. But I noticed a few weeks ago that I have two boards now where the stain has actually uh, begun to strip away. Like literally I have strips that have come out. So now I gotta go back out there again and I don't know if the stain is still good from last year or if I gotta buy another new gallon of stain. And I have to go out there, I have to strip off those two boards again and restain them. You know, and I, I guarantee you that this is because the stain did not take, it didn't absorb the first time because it didn't have enough time to, uh, you know, to cure to a, a degree where the stain would actually soak in. Because all of this shit is, it's, it's on top. It is completely on top of the boards. Like, everything is stripped away and the board just looks like it did the day that it was installed uh, underneath. So that tells me that the stain did not have a chance to absorb into the boards the way that it was supposed to. So I'm gonna have to uh, go back again, redo at least these two boards. Uh, and that's going to be just an absolute fun time because, uh, you know, because that's, 
you know, that's just gonna take a lot out of me. I've been having issues with this hand. Like, this is my right hand, this is my, my dominant hand. You know, where if I'm pushing, I'm putting pressure on my, uh, on this finger, on the, on the index finger, I wind up with pain right in this area. And if you're trying to, like, I plan to use, like, a sandpaper to, uh, to take this, the existing stain off. And you're, you're, you know, you're, you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing. It's gonna be a lot of pressure on there. And that's gonna wear out that hand in no time at all. And yeah, I'm just bitching to, for the sake of bitching, but, uh... This could have all been avoided if the association had just... You know, had just listened to conventional wisdom. Given me, given the boards sufficient time to cure, you know, before before making me stain it. So I'm kind of pissed about that. And then they sent me a, another letter about two weeks ago, telling me that my privacy fence west needs stain. Okay, there are many things wrong with this. Now, when you say privacy fence west, are you talking about the about my side of the privacy fences that face west, or the one that's on the west side? So, which is that? And now, the other part of it is... The fencing I have, which is... which is parallel with the direction I'm moving right here, I got my... Fences do not go east to west. They face north and south. So, which fence are you talking about? So, it's like, it's, it's too, you know, it's, it's, just, it's privacy fences, so there's not a lot of, um, not too much to deal with there as far as, um, as far as details and shit, but, they're, they're, they're very simple. Just kind of tall, like seven feet tall, seven, eight feet tall, so. And what are they, about, uh, about like eight feet, um, eight, ten feet in, uh, in distance from, from the wall to uh, the yard, so. They're not huge by any means, but seriously. How do you not understand that these fences face north and south? They don't face east and west. So how are you going to tell me to uh, to stay in the west privacy fence? Okay, <laughs> which one is it? I got two of them. I got one on uh, on the side with my neighbor on that side, and one with the neighbor on that side. So. Which one are you telling me that I need staining? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Do not go with an HOA. If you are looking for a house or a condo or whatever, do not get an HOA. Do not get an HOA. Do not go into an HOA. Also, consider carefully where you place your cat's litter box. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna hear a lot of that bullshit scraping and scraping, scraping and pawing and pawing and pawing every time they use it. <laughs> okay. Yep, I'm smelling it. Thanks, Trish. I think that's my cue to get off of here. So, I'm gonna go. I'm going to wrap this up, gonna save it, and I'm gonna go to bed because I got work tonight. So you all have yourself a fantastic day, and I don't know if I'll do this format next time or the old usual format again, but either way, have fun, and I will talk to you again later. Adios and bye for now. <laughs>